Happy Mother's Day and welcome to worship at home. For some, today is a day to celebrate great love in our lives. For others, for a variety of reasons, it's a more painful day. This range of emotions, I think, points to that dance that we do as human beings, sometimes giving love, sometimes receiving it. For some, today will be a day to receive love. For others, it'll be a day to give it. The pandemic that we find ourselves in the midst of is much the same. For some, these days of quarantine and economic uncertainty and struggle with our health has been absolutely devastating. Others of us haven't been as personally affected. Some have found themselves on a different end of that love spectrum, receiving love when they are more used to that role of giving it. Others have dug deeply into giving love in new and creative and very powerful ways. My hope is that wherever you find yourself on this spectrum of giving and receiving love, that you would remember that first and foremost, you are loved by God who creates, redeems, and sustains us all. As we begin our time of worship at home, would you pray with me? Almighty God, 
Your son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world, for he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also and you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, Show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. And Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? 
Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me to do anything, I will do it. This is God's word of life for us. Well, grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and Lord Jesus the Christ. Amen. I can recall with very specific detail the house where I grew up. A white house with a large front porch that ran all the way across the main part of the house. There's a Florida room off to the right that provided the perfect spot to look across a park and, and over the river and watch the sunrise. The bedrooms for my brother and I were on the second floor, separated by a Jack and Jill bathroom that, for some reason or another, we never used as kids. And in the attic, we had my uncle's old Lionel train set on a table that must have been at least 8 feet by 12 feet, too large even to walk around to the other side of the room, so you'd have to crawl underneath it. And as I recall these details of a place I still hold dear, my mind races through the memories, remembering additional pieces and, and more importantly, the stories and the feelings that accompany them. The warmth of that Florida room as the sun heated it throughout the day. The joy of realizing with my brother that that train set actually worked and wondering why we didn't give it a try earlier. And the smell of freshly baked bread a signal that it was almost done, that would waft through the house so that we could smell it from our bedrooms upstairs. And of course, when I think of home, I think of my mom too. You know, one of the added benefits of this worship online is that she joins us for worship each week as well. And so I get to say, Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. And a blessed Mother's Day to all moms, and to all of those who share the mother's love with others. I think of my mom when reminiscing about home because of the things that she did to make that house so special, like baking bread each week because she knew how much we loved it. The big and the little ways in which she shared her love and care for my brother and I. Now, needless to say, homes are not homes solely because of the stuff inside of them. They are what they are because of who you share that residence with, for good or for bad. Not everyone feels nostalgic thinking about their childhood homes, but whenever and wherever you picture a good home in your life, it's more than just the structure. It's the relationships you build the experiences and the stories, it's the life lived together that hopefully forms bonds stronger than the walls that hold up the roof. And yet the physical building becomes so much a part of the relationship because it is the setting of those stories and therefore can be difficult to separate the two today. See, when I hear this text from the Gospel according to John, images of my childhood home, they overwhelm me. And yet, that's not what Jesus describes to his disciples. Nor is he talking about places of worship, like the building of Holy Cross, a place we often consider a house of God. It's interesting to receive a text about the preparation of God's house when our own sanctuary, a place we know and experience God, is being itself prepared, both for the short term here and in the long term. You'll see some of the images of the work being done during our last song of the worship today. 
And as good as it is that our space will be that much more welcoming for others to join us and experience the love of God, this isn't the house that Jesus is describing either. Jesus uses the image of the house to draw on the feelings of home to begin to describe the kind of residence and relationship that he invites followers into. Those feelings of comfort and care that make a good home good. But it's important to make the distinction from our memories of home life and what Jesus is talking about because we are often caught up in the physical when Jesus is talking about so much more. These chapters in John's Gospel account, chapters 14 through 17, they're known as the Farewell Discourse. They're a gathering of teachings that Jesus tells his disciples, preparations for both his death and ascension, preparing them for when he isn't with them as he is at that time. He's providing them reassurances not to fear, for they will not be left alone. When he's gone, he'll send an advocate to walk alongside them. He gives them peace and he prays for them, all so that they might have something to hold on to and to look back and remember when confused and frightened in the future after his death. And so he draws on the example of the dwelling place, a place to find rest and comfort. When Jesus talks about dwelling places, he's using a word that can also mean an abode, right? A word that shares its roots with the invitation to abide with him. This goes beyond a room with a bed. This is an invitation to reconciliation known now. There's a relationship formed when abiding with Christ. The text begins, in my father's house, there are many dwelling places, but we can otherwise hear that as, where my father lives, there are many places where you can abide, where you can step into and live with me. This goes beyond the physical meaning of homes and into an understanding of what Jesus is preparing his disciples for. Because there isn't just one house, but there is one body of Christ with its many members in which Christ dwells. We are living in the time that Jesus is preparing his disciples for. Not some far off, but known to us now. The house of God is Christ's own body. The dwelling places of God is not restricted to the church walls, but it is our very selves. And in learning more about God and following our faith, we are being prepared in our own way to understand what life abiding with Christ looks like more and more. Jesus is calling us into a relationship that constantly transforms us and makes us ready to be further into relationship with him. And as we walk along the road of discipleship, we begin to see and do the great works of Christ in the world. Of course, sometimes it can be hard to remember the presence of our abiding God. Those times when faith doesn't seem to come like a wave that washes worry away. And Jesus understands this. There have been times in my own life when I hear someone tell me that God is with me, but I just don't see how and feel nothing but alone. For these disciples whose teacher would soon be killed, who hid in fear and were left not knowing what to do, I imagine they felt the same way. And in that recognition, Jesus tells them that in these times, when they cannot believe solely based on the words of the gospel, that they remember the works he has done. Look for where the gospel is lived out. Remember the times you felt God's presence in your own lives. See how these greater works are being done in the world through hands of compassion, being alongside the walk with someone else to abide with them through joy and pain. It's through those who love as moms and make life that much more special. Jesus' preparation for dwelling places is a preparation for us, for the greater works that he describes cannot be done by a building. They are done by the people who abide with one another. 
So how might you answer the call to be a dwelling place for others, a place of comfort and rest from the chaos of the world? How might you be a home where love is known, the greater works are achieved? Amen. Something's gonna happen like the world has never known when the people Listen to your children praying.